You are now entering the LuxCore Studios. And you've secured a seat for the Protecting Your Radius podcast. Here, Here, we build connections from your contracting profession to some of the top bleeding edge products and services. Don't get deterred. Let's not delay. Here is your host, Nathan Downs. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Protecting Your Radius podcast. I'm your host, Nathan Downs. And today in studio, I have my good friend back for round number two here at the show, Brett Richeson with Fence Track. What's up, dude? Doing good, man. It's good to be back. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming. So we have a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, first off, we're a couple weeks removed from Fence Tech. How, Fence Tech was in our backyard. Yeah. How was the show for you guys? It's probably one of our best shows we've ever had, honestly. You know, I was a little like everyone, Oklahoma, you know, why are we going to Oklahoma? Even though it's our backyard. But uh, it was a great turnout. Oklahoma City had everything you'd want, restaurants. The whole event center was really, is brand new, yeah. really modern, clean. We had a great time and a great showing. Yeah, it was one of the best shows we've ever had. So no, we're super great. excited. Yeah, it was super cool. I, I love the fact of everything down there was new and all that stuff. I mean, it really... Yeah. And it was nice having everything in a central location to where we could all, you know what I'm saying? Like it was easier to connect with people and they even had a spot after. that I don't think it was just for our show. They have a reserved area for food trucks right outside of right. The, and that was That's nice cool. whenever you were getting hungry halfway through the show. Yeah. So there were several times we snuck out there and yeah, but it was just, just great. So great job on the, so AFA on that. So that. At the show, there was a number of different things that you were talking to people about, showing people. Um, you and I have been talking about it for months, but now we're here. We have things to show everyone out there yeah. and roll out and stuff. So um, let's get first into the big, the big kind of linchpin and everything that was going on at, at Fence Tech for you guys was the LuxCore product. Um, yes that you guys are manufacturing and right. bringing in. So so tell us all about LuxCore, because I've been talking about it for weeks, but... So we've been developing this new no-maintenance composite board because it's something that we haven't had yet. We've had the the privacy fence frame and post, and we've, right. we've put a materials like cedar, vinyl, in, and composite. But what we found with some of the composites that are already out there is they're really meant for decking. And so they work great. They're great products if you have them screwed down to a deck and using them in that instance. But what we found out is if you put those boards in a floating system, one, if they don't have the tongue and groove in there, they're going to move around. Right. And uh, we also found out that a lot of the decking products has a lot of the PVC materials or they call it a WPC, like wood plastic. Um, and so they're great for the elements, but some of them are uh, not so great when the sun's hitting them and there's no tongue and groove. And we also found out that um, they get hot and have some thermal expansion and they'll move. So without having those screws uh, like you would in a deck system, yeah, we had to come up with something that would work in a floating system. And so I brought a piece with me here yep. to show the guys. Um, so what we came up with is... We came up with an aluminum insert. I don't know if everybody can see this, but there's an aluminum insert in the core of this uh, of this composite board, and that also kind of ties in with the name LuxCore. Right. But we just wanted to do everything. We know that this stuff can be expensive, but if you're going to have a no maintenance fence, I want I want the customer to have a no maintenance fence. Yeah. And uh, why would you want something that would maybe have chances of moving? Uh, and getting hot and warping, uh, even though it's supposed to be a no maintenance board. And so we just, uh, at Fence Track, we like to do things right. Yeah. And uh, sometimes we overkill things, but I mean, I mean look at it. I mean, the, it's, it's, <laughs> I love it though. But we wanted to make sure that we weren't going to be getting callbacks and some. Sure. So. And, and that's one of the things we've been talking about mm -hmm. selling that to people is explaining to them, you're, you're almost buying three fences. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, oh, okay. So you're buying the steel fence track 
frame system, the posts and all that, right? right? Then you're buying a composite picket, you know, where typically either it was a solid composite or or it was uh, the hollow cores. We've seen all of them and used all of them yep. in your system. And then now we've got that aluminum extrusion in that. So it's like an aluminum fence <laughs> wrapped in composite, framed out in steel. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, now your composite is a little bit different from some of the other ones. Like we were talking about the WPC. That is not what this is. So this is uh, what they call cellular PVC, which is no wood particles in this. Okay. And uh, so it's solid PVC, but... Um, that's why we had to add the aluminum core in there because PVC is great except for the heat thermal expansion part of it, right. where that aluminum core helps with that, keeping it straight. So, um, but as far as like dropping this in water, you could probably leave it, you probably leave it in the lake and pick it out a month later and get the nasty stuff off of it. And it's probably still not going to have anything. Right. I mean, it, it's some awesome stuff. And uh, we've been throwing uh, we've been throwing all sorts of things at it. Like we uh, we have a sample uh, system up at our shop. And we're just throwing baseballs at it, right. seeing what it'll do. Throwing uh, everything we can think of, wrenches, everything, and it holds up great. I mean, it's a it's got an outer layer ASA cap, which is used in the auto industry, okay. and so that's a really long lasting. A last little layer. It's a little thin layer around the PVC, that, and that's what they usually do the co extrusion on to give it that wood grain look and effect and colors as well. So, as you can see, I don't know if everybody can see this, but the uh, PVC part's more of a gray color. And right. so, but uh, yeah, I mean, we we went above and beyond on testing and just wanted to get it right and this yeah. is pretty much the result of all that so for those that aren't watching and are listening the the board itself looks like a one by six it is a, a solid um through the middle basically mm -hmm. uh tongue and groove so it's like a solid tongue and groove one by six board uh, made out of you know composite plastic based only and then in the middle of it it's got these five channels of aluminum and they're one all one big rectangular extrusion and that is what allows mm -hmm. you know the heat to dissipate through it so, that, yeah that helps a lot yeah. right yeah so because that's what we saw with the first iteration of it it was solid, had PVC, it solid there was no aluminum insert but talk about that because i think that's an interesting so strength like what it strength did. wise the color the everything was perfect yeah but we during the R&D process, we set up a bunch of panels, we put heat on it, we we had it in all the elements we could think of, and we saw some movement, which we know, we've been told, even vinyl products move, yeah. they have thermal expansion, yep. and um, a lot of the colors, so white is probably your best at not moving as much, but when you start getting into your darker colors, you have a, a lot more chance of those having more movement. Yeah. Um, so... Once we started testing that without the aluminum insert, it did well, but we did notice a slight movement in, in the panel where it might have had like a slight belly. Uh, and what's funny is wherever the sun was, that's where it would move towards. Right. And when the sun would go down, it would go back. It would go back. Yeah. But then we wanted to go really test out. So we put a lot of heat on it. We... I mean, almost to where we're trying to melt the stuff and just see what it would do. And sometimes it would overcompensate and cool down fast and go the other way. And so we're just trying to think of all these extreme temps uh, around the country that we get up and down and, uh, and play around with different scenarios. And, yeah. but what we found is that we think that it was necessary to definitely put that aluminum core in there sure. because it wasn't horrible, but, you know, we don't want someone having, uh, a no maintenance fence that has a little bit of movement. So, right. I think that, yeah, that's super important because the movement that we had was so negligible. Like it really didn't impact anything when I saw it and you were showing it to me. But, you know, we're in Oklahoma and, you know, everyone's been to Oklahoma <laughs> and they saw it in February. It's, it's 75 degrees one day and then the next day it was 30 degrees and rainy. I mean, you know, that's what we get. The where winds we here are insane. And the winds are I mean, insane. this is a great place for testing grounds for fence products, for sure. 
That's why all the innovation comes from here. <laughs> all right, right. All the innovation doesn't come from here. <laughs> I had my phone on. Who is this guy? Mickey Mouse. So anyways, um, so the Lux Core, what's the ASA mean? You, you, we talk about the ASA oh cap. It's a fancy you know it word. Is? I can't even pronounce it. What's um, the point of it, though? Like, explain that to me. Like, is... Now, yeah, you're getting into real technical stuff it, there, which is, I, I okay. wish I knew well, that. But, uh, well, the reason I ask is because remember there was those products that some of the vinyl guys had, even yeah. like Buff Tech and stuff. Yeah. They had the 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 cap, the yeah. cap stock or whatever they called right, it. Right, Is it the same it's kind of the same. principle? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. It is a long word. Uh, I can't even pronounce it. it. Don't even worry about okay. it. Don't pull out okay. your... Yeah. <laughs> I was just thought. But I just it, thought I'd ask. But cause. it is what everyone that is wanting something to uh, have that longevity is doing for their co extrusion okay. on the outside. So we said that's had the best results. Yeah, that's what we want. To do. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm sure it's mm -hmm. probably married with a bunch of the other yeah. processes that these yeah. vinyl guys are yeah. doing. Yeah. And the have the thing that we're doing is impact. So yeah. the, the, these oh, vinyl okay. products are great products, but we do a lot of commercial applications and they they want to be able to throw things at it and yep. not have anything break um and so that's where that all that thickness and that strength comes in so i know that one video you sent me brett you guys were throwing the baseball at it yeah and uh <laughs> it was so funny i'm watching the video and tony and trent and you're you're like oh it hit right here and it like it didn't hit right there it was over there. but you literally could not tell anywhere on that wall that fence you could not tell where the ball hit and no. i was like that's not where it hit because i was rewinding it in slow right. motion to see yeah. you guys are like did it hit here or six inches to the right or up or yeah i mean it was it was impressive yeah i mean that's it, super it, cool it does great and uh, we about all threw our arms out that day, trying right. to trying to damage that thing. yeah it didn't yeah. succeed so that was the big rollout. Mm -hmm. The one that we've been really excited for in our market is we have a we have a special. I'll explain it to people that don't know. Uh, we have a special product line that's been sold here for a long time. I hear it's kind of a niche. It is in, in, the, in this region. But. Not a lot. Yes, for, fortunately for every other market, no, and very few other people use it. But we take peeler cores, right. um, typically from a Douglas fir tree or like a Southern yellow pine, uh, they'll send it to a treatment plant. And then we, uh, there's a handful of companies in, in the Tulsa area. We'll take the peeler cores. They'll, you might have to tell everyone what peeler core is. Oh, so peeler core is the center of the tree, mm -hmm. right? So if you've got the, the tree comes out and it's milled. And if you ever saw, I'd love to, you know that I need to get a uh, lumber mill on here and explain. It's fascinating. Would, yeah. It is super cool. Can, can a lumber mill like fly me out and we could talk? <laughs> but like, so the peeler core is the center, like the heart of the tree, right? right. The, the dead center right down the middle. And it's trashed traditionally, right? Because there's really, you can't make lumber out of it uh, because of the end grain and stuff like that. So they bring in the peeler cores or they send them off to get treated. Then they bring them into our market. Um, and then... A couple of the companies, they'll dowel the ends of these things to where they have like a two inch circular mm -hmm. nipple, so to speak, <laughs> right. on each end. Right. I mean, there's no better word. Right. Like, we've right. tried to figure that out for years. I'm like, it's a nipple. <laughs> I mean, that's what it looks like. I mean, whatever. right. <laughs> um, and then um, on the posts, we do the same thing. Um, you do the same thing. You cut off the top so it looks like it has a dome top. And then there's, you measure down and you, you have machines that drill holes through it. Um, some companies use what we call pin rail down here, which is like rebar stakes that you just drill the holes through the whole thing and you put rebar. So it's a, it's a wood post with the two pieces of the, the peeler cores essentially coming off as rails. Why it picked up notoriety here was because they add black chain link to it mm -hmm. or green chain link or right. whatever. But traditionally it's black chain it, link. It right? gives you a country look. It gives that. <laughs> But it allows Rustic you to, look, to, right. to have the wire on and, and staple the wire. What's yeah. funny for me and you, because we know the difference between all the different like wood variations and yeah. stuff. Most people that don't know it's treated round rail will actually call that split rail fence with black chain well, link. I, I noticed that split rail is actually popular yes. in, a, in a larger 
amount of the U.S. Yep. Where this round rail is more in our it's, area. It's an Oklahoma right thing. Yeah. I know. And they Arkansas call it they call it too. round rail. I've heard it called what else? Ranch, uh, ranch rail. rail. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it really split rail is more of the really rustic looking. Yes. You know, it's the same concept. You're dialing those ends, and but you're more of a rectangle hole right. rather than a circular hole. Right. On the on the punch in the holes in the post. That's a cool look too, but it's, yeah. it's really, it'd be really hard to run wire well, because of the, it, it's actually not hard to run wire. It's almost impossible to run chain link, right? Because right, we're right. running chain link, right? right? Right. So everybody knows what the, you know, the, the, the challenges and the advantages of chain link are, but you can imagine sticking chain link on a, a true cedar split rail. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's too irregular. It's not. Yeah. So yeah. that's why you see a lot of them use like field fence or they use the horse fence. Right. You know, a little bit something thinner, 14, 16 gauge, 18 right. gauge, something you could staple up there or whatever. So but yeah, all of that being it's said, very pop, the round rail that we're super very popular. popular here, four foot, five foot. Yep. I've even seen some six, six foot, foot. Which is kind of wild. So the challenge we have is for a long time, the primary um product that we had imported in yep. um from Oregon from a certain mill actually was the Douglas fir peeler course. Um and Douglas fir uh is a very hard soft wood. Uh, it doesn't take stain well. It doesn't take treatment well, pressure treating, doesn't really take anything well. Um so the pressure treating, as we all know, there's some conversations even on my fence life this week, uh, you know, with the uh, the fence armor guy was on there talking about, you oh, know, yeah. CCA, ACQ. Um, so we've discussed that. We'll have a whole show on that one day because, oh, my gosh, we deal with that because we have so much ag here, too. Right. right. But they the EPA said we couldn't use certain things, had to take out the arsenic and all those other yeah. things. When in did our that, that was about what? 15? Yeah, about 15, 15 years, years ago. ago. Yeah, it was like 2007, 2006, somewhere around there. Yeah, they if start. I remember right. Yeah. So the um, so what happens is we have these round rail fences by the miles around here, like hundreds of miles of this stuff. Yeah. And they fail all the time. And it's always water. It's always, you know, again, things like fence armor and stuff, you know eliminated or, or at least, well, cut at least down prolong on it, yeah, the a little bit for sure. Yeah. sure sure and there's something to be said about all of that again we can have a whole episode on that but we've always said if we could only have a metal post that kind of mimic the look right. but we've never been able to do it we i've tried to do it with rounds i've tried to do it but then you couldn't put chain link on it right which is then was the hold back for forever so you and i talked about this after you started fence track, I mean, this is 11, 12 years ago, but the big thing um, coming is now we have the high plane system yep. that you've been talking yep. about. And we've got a couple samples here. So we're going to show and I'll describe as Brett's showing some of this stuff. Can I see this sample here? Yeah, there you go. It kind of blends in with your wall. It does a little bit. But yeah, so the idea, the concept behind this is we have these... Um, H beams or I beams, essentially. It's a universal. Yep. And it can be used for ends, lines, corners, everything in between. But you can slide in uh, two by sixes or two by eights, two by anything, really, um, in the middle of that. And what we're doing locally here in our market is putting in cedar um, because it gives that rustic, like with that mm -hmm. rough cedar, it gives that rustic look, but it's clean enough. And when you staple black chain link on that dude awesome. it looks awesome like you yeah. can barely see it and that's another thing that people like about round rail traditionally right right it, the, blends, it in. blends in the further right. away you are you have a large lot you, you know you have an acre acre and a half in these neighborhoods and you want this but this thing is like next level man so describe how you got to where we're at with the high plains product well actually about uh oh maybe even six or seven years ago, maybe even longer, we were just taking square post and we kind of had this idea, but we just made our side channels for our privacy fence a little wider. And we started uh, manufacturing those and we just tested it in our market for the last five years to see if it would even take off and people, and right. it did. I mean, people loved it. So it started slowly replacing some of the round rail 
in a lot of areas. But the negative to it is we wanted to speed up the process of in, uh, of installation. So you had to set your post and you had to screw the channels on there. And then this post, the channels are already in the profile, right. basically. Right. And so you can just go ahead and set the post right away. And then what's really awesome about this post is it's universal. So you've got your, like you said, you can slide it. All you got to do to make an end post is slide this piece in the end. And it just slides right down. I've got another thing over here that'll slide a little easier. But you can cap it off for your gates or for your end post. And then when we have a corner, you just have another piece similar to the end cap that makes a 90. And then you can take off for your 90 down the other way. Yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can grab it without knocking everything over. So, yeah, here is. Oh, there's the end. I don't know if he. Yeah. Yeah. So that just slides in real easy. And then here's your corner. So if this is your, if you're looking down at that post, can everybody, I don't think. Here, hold it up to the camera right think there. think they can see that? Yeah. That, yeah, they can definitely see that. And so that corner had to slide right in. And then your, your post cap sits right here. And then your rails will take off right here. The same, the same distance or height as your other rails. But yeah, it just simplifies everything. And what I love about this post is where you have other products like um, your vinyl systems, which are great, by the way. But if you're if you're a distributor or if you're a company that wants to keep some on hand, yeah, I mean, I think some people are afraid to order too much of one. I mean, they would really have to have a very popular style to keep inventory of that. Of that, because you you don't know if your customer is going to want two rail, yep. three rail, four rail, what color, yep, um, you know how they want everything ran. So what's cool about this post is that post you can space out how you want on your rail. So you can do one, two, three. You can even do a solid privacy out of it if yeah, you want to. Sure, you know. So we, we I bid one yesterday. And they wanted four rail, four foot tall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, why not? Yeah. You know. Yeah. And if you have some on hand, yeah, you don't have to go call a distributor exactly. or a manufacturer and go, "Hey, I got to get a four rail down," or because even a lot of the major distributors in certain areas they might stock it. But in our area, where vinyl's not quite as yeah. popular as the coast, um, you know, it, it takes a little bit of time to get some of that in, and so yeah. it'll speed up the lead times by having something that's more versatile. So it's aluminum, aluminum extrusions, yes. yeah. It's, uh, it's a very complex shape, so that's why yep. we did the aluminum, and we wanted to do. Uh, we didn't. We didn't cheapen up the the thickness on that profile. I mean, no. we. Lee, what would you say? That's a, a almost a quarter it's in the a middle, quarter inch in the middle, yeah, and maybe just slightly a slight, less well, maybe on the three outside. sixteenths on the outside, mm -hmm. and because we wanted edges. even the guys that like to drive, yeah, we wanted them to be able to drive it, and Accurate. we're sending stuff to some of the guys that are big uh drivers right now to test it for us and okay. so hopefully we'll get some footage of that soon of them testing that out for that everybody would be sweet to see how that works so and then the the all of your rails are just held in with tech screws self-drilling screws self yeah screws. so um uh, we use stainless screws okay they're coated and you only need to put one in the middle on one side and two on the other side so you just kind of if i could turn around so if you could see this you'd put one here yeah, approximately there on the other side. And like I said, even though this is brand new, we've done a similar concept with the just the regular channel and screwing those in with the old fence track post mm -hmm. before we came out with the high planes. And I haven't had any callbacks of the screws. That's true. Um, you know, and that's been six, seven years now. And so I'm very confident in all those. Um We've had some people ask us at Finstech if we're going to come out with a no maintenance rail. So now that we have the Lux Core figured out, yeah, we're thinking about doing a two by six with the same aluminum core because that's the scary part about doing a composite board that big, an eight foot span, yeah, will hold up in the heat, right? Well, it might with a good enough core insert in it. For over 30 years, Southwest Automated Security has been the premier provider of gate operators, access controls, CCTV, and so much more. Visit southwestautomated.com today, taking dealers to the next level. 
Right. And that way you could have that wood look, or we, we probably will come out even with an aluminum two by six. Sure. You know? Well, I was even thinking, I mean, you could put a two by six vinyl yeah. in there now. Yeah. I think they're a little bit, um, thinner than this, uh, yeah. cedar profile, but it wouldn't take much to put something like a little sleeve, uh, to take out the play. Of course the screws will pull, pull it to one sure. side a little bit. You might have like a eighth inch gap on the other, but maybe you put a, like a but, washer or, yeah, a I mean, you or could, something. Or, like or we spacer. could even develop some kind of even plastic little, it's a shim spacer, yeah. you know, that we slide over the vinyl and it takes the play out of it. So it would it, be simple. to. It's do. sweet. I love the look of it because it's, it's unique enough. And I know you did. I remember when we started working on it with like the 3d printing and yeah. come up with different ideas and yeah. all the different options and the way to make it all slide together for your corners and stuff like that. But now that it's here um, and being able to put it in and touch it and stuff, um, it man, was, it's, we had a ton of people uh, it's, it's at the slick. show, like yeah. really love it. And it's a simple design, super I mean, simple. And, and, but it's an eye catcher and yeah. uh, people were stopping, you know, we've had, we had their privacy up and it looked sharp, but they were walking right by privacy and they were going to that, right yeah. to the ranch rail. And it was like, wow, they're really taking onto this. So I think we've already started seeing the sales like since FinTech, right. but I think it's going to be a big hit and, and not, and it, I think with this, so the round rail was popular just in our region, but I think this will help this kind of look and style go further out than just our region. A hundred percent. Because we're already having people in Colorado yep. love this. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. And uh, it looks fancy. Mm-hmm. You know, even, it has a modern look yeah, to it. Yeah, modern absolutely. Because that's where a lot of the style is going is is the modern. And you could change the aesthetic of this thing just by changing the stain. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, we could stain those black. Right. And it could look like a black post and rail, like Kentucky horse fence. Yep. You know, but throw some, you know, throw some wire mesh on there yep. and stuff. And there's so many things you could do with and it. And it's easy to staple that chain link on there and stretch yep. it from end to end and. We're also working on developing uh, things that slide down in these tracks right here. And one to help the, right now when they are stretching wire, they're just taking the self drilling screws and screwing it to the post in a good spot. Mm -hmm. But we're going to come out with these little clips that kind of have a hook on them where you can just slide your tension bar. So you're not really having to screw into the post and they, they can be moved around up and down. And then also um, a hot wire. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can have an sure. adjustable hot wire area down those tracks where, so that's, what's so cool about, and it goes with the name fence track, right? You know, the high plains by fence track is there's tracks everywhere in the post to just keep playing around with all the neat add concepts. All your stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brett used to want to add, what were the things we talked about in the past? Adding like bird feeders, <laughs> planter holders. We've I mean, got we've it all. Gone. We've got it all in the <laughs> Can in you the remember patent, some so, of those yes, things? Yes, was, was, yeah. So stupid. We're like, what if you had the rail and it had this hook <laughs> that came in? The, it's oh already being, gosh. it's already done. You're, yeah. You've, you finally mm-hmm. got there, buddy. You you made it. So um, it's awesome. You guys have to see it. We're going to have more. Um, we're going to have more stuff online coming out about it. Um, you know, we've been posting, we posted a couple reels kind of teasing it and some different things yeah. before we went to fence tech. But uh, yeah, now that it's here, that, that the biggest thing as a fence company owner is the ability to do so many different styles with the same product. Right. You know, cause you're yeah. right. I mean, how many times you have to buy, you know, in the round rail or really anything. I mean, that's why, you know, that's why so many companies get into the point when they start doing a lot of vinyl. Right. Right. They're like, well, we have our own they router. Ha- they have, you have to, to buy a router. Right. Yes. You you don't have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's cool about this is because like someone like us, we don't do very much vinyl at all. But I'm like, I don't want to buy a router, but this could get me to play in that space. Yeah. And the price point installed isn't that much no. far off. It's mm-hmm. more expensive. Right. It's more. But I mean, it's completely different. Well, another I mean, thing, um, don't get me wrong. I love vinyl. I've installed a lot of it over the years. But fire is something to think about True. on the vinyl. Yep. And um, we have a lot of grass fires here in Oklahoma. And I've gone down the highway and seen 
beautiful ranch trail fences just laid over. And, you know, they have to hurry up and get them back up before right. anything escapes or gets in or out. And uh, this, you might char the paint a little bit, but you could still keep your livestock in or whatever right. you're trying to keep in. Now the now the rails will all just catch on fire. <laughs> right. we'll, see, we'll see all these high planes <laughs> posts just sitting there and rails just but, flaming up. But if you think about it, I guess. Not if you're staying as no VOCs. Well, um, yeah. And... Uh, but all you got to do is uh, put the rails back in where yes. anything else, you have to go back and set the post. Right. You know? And so. so how many times as a company are we doing repairs on these wood posts? It's a pain in the butt for the homeowner, for the fence company, for all of us to be able to go to like this. And that's what we were showing people at our home and garden show two weeks ago was I said, if you bought this, you don't need to call us to fix it. Like if you broke a rail or, you know, one of them's oh, finally they can deteriorating. Go to Home Depot or Lowe's and yeah. Two by six. yeah. I'm like, it's not that big of a deal. And they're yeah. like, really? I'm like, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, so how much, again, savings over time, like, so time of uh, the cost of investment right. versus the savings over time. I mean, it, it just starts to weigh into all these factors. Well, as a manufacturer, you really do need to think of the installer side too. I mean, yeah. And I used to install. So I try to keep that in the back of my mind. Like, would I like this product if I was putting in or what what are the pros and cons of this? And so it, it does help to have that background when you're developing yeah. products, you know, oh, for installing. Because sure. you, you you know if you don't mind putting it up, then most likely, you know, other installers are gonna mind installing it too. Man, yep. I'm getting blown up too. Yep. To on. Come on now. Mickey Mouse. I, everyone loves the show so much. I think they're just ah. calling us saying I love it. Are we live? No. <laughs> Got the new products. We got all the new stuff. What else is on the horizon for you guys? Like, what do you see 2023 being? We were on a Instagram live last night with, uh, I, I was actually on with um, Dan Wheeler from the Fence Industry Podcast and uh, Matt Sheridana uh, from JC Fence, who's got his new uh, CRM uh, out yeah. that we did the I elite technique. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, super cool. I told Tony a to lot give him of a call, things. So Tony might be calling. <laughs> A lot of things, like any technology, there's so many things that have room for improvement. Right. But um, to see, you know, in there's, I mean, there's just so the, many products. Just everything out there, evolving dude. is pretty cool. Yeah. It, it's awesome. It's awesome. Whether it's products like this or even the yeah. software side or whatever. Yeah. So, what do you see coming through the remainder of the year? Like, this what do you year? think? Yeah. What do you think 2023 is going to end up like? I mean, we're a as, quarter of the way through. As in uh, market things coming. Oh, man. What do you think is going to happen? Because we're talking about this all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it seems, I, I will say that uh, this year does feel a little less hectic because it seemed like the last two years of COVID was just. Oh. Brutal. And Brutal. I feel like we're definitely busy, but it doesn't feel as pressured. Mm. Uh, so I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's some things are slowing down or people are getting caught up on some things. But we've also had a bunch of bad weather. And so I think that, that definitely takes a toll in it. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I, think, I think we're going to be just as busy as ever this year, honestly. Um, I think we might have a little bit of a slow start because of the weather really and stuff. But sure. so far, I've been busy. I've been talking to a lot of the fence guys. You're busy. Yep. I mean, you hear a lot of things on the news and you start to kind of like, oh, man, should I pull back on some things? Right. But I think the last 10 to 15 years, you hear a lot of doom and gloom on the, on the news and the stock market. And you hear some of these things going on right now with the banks and you're you know, what should I do? But crazy time. It doesn't matter. America, the world, they're all about continuing on and evolving products. And, you know, people just want to keep innovating and moving forward and, and even making their houses better. And, you know, so I just think it's just going to, for everybody in the industry, I think it's just going to keep growing. I think everyone's just going to see a lot of growth. But yeah, I just, I just think, I just think that it's just going to continue to grow. I mean, yeah. everybody's businesses and, and it's, it's not a bad idea to, um, always have 
a conscience on the market, but but I also don't think you should. I've, I've heard Mr. Fence talk about this. A lot of the guys, it's like, hey, you know, if things do feel kind of off, doesn't mean you hide and anything. You just go out there and you work harder and you market better. And yep. And uh, there's always ways to expand your your business. Sure. So create a better version yeah. of yourself. Yeah. What about you? What are you seeing? Yeah, no, I think it's going to be the same. Um, I'm again, and I continue to mention this. I mean, we're in a growth quadrant just because we're working on capturing market share because yeah. we're new, right? Yeah. So it's not fair to say, well, you know, how how's Nathan's company doing? When you're like, all right, well, it's got to, you know, my expectation and the workload that we're putting in, it's going to produce more, right? right. But I think the market is definitely flatlined it feels like and i think it won't be as fireball hot like you're yeah. saying yeah i think there's going to be areas it seems and it still seems to be this way just talking to normal homeowners out there and and i think of residential because so much residential drives so much right. of the of our economy even if we're not doing residential fences even if you're a commercial only you'd be surprised there's still that residential factor right. plays such a role in it but um, my interpretation of everything that I see happening is you have some really affluent clients that do not care. Like that's, they're going to get that's a fence great track point. with Lux Corp. Yeah, because this product is not your, I'm on a budget. Right. Uh, I, I just, I, I'm 21 years old and I just moved into my first house. They're probably going to be more on the budgetary side of, even if they want it, they're probably right. Unless it's just a small portion, but most of our customers, they either want it bad enough, they're going to get it anyway, or they are living in homes that are 300,000 and up, um, or they're HOAs that are new modern HOAs and they want something to look, um, fit the development that they're working on. And, and, and a lot of apartments, so commercial is huge for us because a lot of apartments, they don't want their maintenance guys doing any work. So and you know if they can fit in the budget they're going to they're going to do products that last so so yes we definitely are in a a market that even in times that a a lot of the residential might have to tighten up a little bit we're probably going to still continue to sell yeah you know a lot of these products in the commercial side of it or the high end side of it so yeah that's a great point yeah you know but i do see though over the next and i've said this in the last show over the next 10 years, I think I think people are seeing fence as more of an investment and in value in the value in fence, and they're gonna be okay with you know going ahead and spending more money on fence because it used to be kind of a last thought thing, like I have yeah. to do this. My house matters, but the fence I just now these fences that everybody's installing look amazing. Yeah. I mean uh Every like you said, even the wood. Even if you're doing wood, you're using steel post, and they're doing horizontal, and they're staining it now. Yep. And so, I think over the next ten years, you're just going to see people be like, "We want it. We're going to do it. as long as you know we can." You know, they're going to see the value in it. It's not just going to be pushed to the side. Fence is not going to be pushed to the side anymore. It's and, part of the house. You know? Yeah, yeah. And when you just have, as much as the kitchen. You know? Right. Yeah. Right. Like a kitchen or an outdoor patio you know uh expansion or like you you guys doing a pool or oh yeah. i mean there's so many different things you could spend your money on the fact of that the fence even falls within that headspace of like maybe this is an investment we would make i mean it uh, it makes more sense whenever you look at it like like we talk about hey you might have to replace uh a fence that doesn't have steel or powder coat finish and all that. You might have to, your, your standard fence with wood posts for you might have to do three times. Yeah. By the, the time you would, time. yeah. By the I time you do one fence track fence, maybe not. I mean, maybe even longer, you know? Yeah. So. so that puts it back on us, um, whether we're fence professionals leading an organization or we're the owners making the final decisions to make sure that we have products and things in place that can reach, like do more for us as a company, right? It's really educating the customer. And if you can educate them and, and show them those scenarios and what to think about, 
you know? So yeah. if someone says, man, I'm only going to live here like a year and then I'm out of here, I, you know, you may or may not push Finch track on, right. but if they're like, this is my dream home mm-hmm. and I'm out on a sales call and I want something modern. I want to be done with it. Hey, you know, you educate them why this would be a good choice. Yep. And nine times out of 10, they'll say, you know what? You know, I didn't really want to spend that kind of money. That makes sense now because I'm going to spend more uh, if I got to do this fence three times. Right. In the end, I'm going to end up spending more. And I'm going to, and I plan on living here for the rest of my life. So, yeah, you, you know what? You're right. Thank you for educating me. Now I can make a better decision yeah. on what I want. So, and, and thinking back to where, where I was going with that on top of just what we offer the clients is having a product like, like the High Plains is a great mm-hmm. example. We already mentioned it before, but really drilling down saying there's a, there's something that can lead everything. Like, you know, we got one post to rule them all. <laughs> I mean, I mean, really, right? What what ring are you wearing over there? You're going to disappear if that's the ring. ring of power over there. Um, I wonder if our listeners even know what you're talking about. Oh, if you're watching the YouTube video, you just you just saw it. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Um, but you know, again, those are the things that we need to do. Like I look out it in a shop like ours where we have limited space already, anyways. And you're sitting there going, okay, well, how much, how much can you produce from this small footprint? The more products that we have like yours, like the High Plains product that can universally do six or seven or eight or 10 different types of fences, right? Of that, that's, you know, that's what I'm looking for. Cause I'm sitting there thinking, well, how do I, how do I reduce my SKUs, but to be able to produce more custom things yeah. and and that's what we're doing you know we we do a lot of custom stuff we're already you know into the horizontals and doing all that stuff mm-hmm. but i continue to try to innovate with what do we already have here and how could i make a better mousetrap right like i don't need to like you know we we know we know the mouse that we're trying to catch but how can we take what we already have and make something better or bring in products like the fence track with the luck score and stuff to offer something that's just a step above where we would have been in the past where we're just hacking stuff together. You know, you're just throwing a bunch of treated wood at it and you're like, well, it feels you know. good knowing that at least the post anyways, if you were doing the high planes that they're going to probably be there for, Oh man. I mean, yeah. You're going to walk away from that customer going, I, unless a tree falls on that, right. I'm not going to get a call back on that post. No. He might, they might, they might want to replace the cedar in 20 years and sure. do a little touch up on the stain or something. But, yeah, I mean, you're, these products make me feel better as a if I was a salesman, you know, or I am a salesman really for sure. fence track in a way. But I'm, I'm trying to put myself back into the install side of it, knowing that with the round rail, if it rots out in two years, yeah, like we were talking about, and yeah, you just sold a guy a five thousand dollar fence, but he would have spent thirteen thousand on yeah. the high planes, right? But Man, if it only lasts two years and he didn't know, he wasn't educated on that. Yeah. You know, and you, know, you just sold it to him and said, hey, it's what he asked for. So I put it in. That's where it's like, man, if that guy calls me back in two years and it's rotting out, he's going to be. Or even in like some scenarios where we're seeing. So again, this comes back to being the professional, right? Yeah. If I walk out to your yard, like I walk out to your new house and I see a depression in the yard where it's like a day like today where it's rained a ton oh, that's so- and I see, you know, and you see the, the water and then I come back two days later and the water's still there. I'm going to go, yeah, you don't need, you don't need wood yeah. where it's submerged for weeks at a time. You need, you need, you need some alternative option there well, and as then, opposed to just uh, most people have sprinkler system. And so not true, only are your, your wood post or whatever you have is, you know, hitting all those elements that are natural. Yeah. The the man-made water. True. And uh, a lot of the grading is done to where right. the yard meets down in the middle so the water can flow from, so both neighbors don't have water going back towards the house. Guess where it's sitting? Yeah. It's right on the fence, fence line because it's right down the property and line. And then you got sprinklers hitting <laughs> it. Yeah. And, and so for me, whether it's fence track or not, I think steel post is a very smart, Steel yeah. or aluminum or no maintenance, even PVC. Yeah. 
is a, a very smart choice. Yeah, um, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the guy Sal or whoever from Fence Armor on here so he can say that Brett's an idiot. So <laughs> <laughs> that fence track guy, I'm like, that's hey, great, I'll get you both. Hey, on that's here. a great okay. idea, though. I mean, because you're still gonna have wood all over the place. It's true, and you know, but. We're just always trying to evolve. Yes. But, but that that's a necessity, and he probably invented that because it was something that was annoying and old, right. and, and, and it's a great product. Or, or you have is. markets that aren't willing to change. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you're, exactly. And then you're like, okay, so. Because, I mean, think about this. Look at, look at even um, what Ameristar has done over right. time. I mean, being in our backyard, you know, where Eddie, Eddie and Paul and all those guys came up with the ideas of like, you know, oh, we need a prefabricated, you know, system for residential because how was it built before then? It was, you could build it in your shop, but it was legitimate wrought iron. Like it was made by hand, sliding the pickets in, welding them, painting the panel, you know, so all the things that were done over time, the evolution of that, you know, it's a tubular system and then it's powder coated and then eventually gets E-coated and then it's got profusion welding. So it's got these, yeah. you know, proprietary tabs and all these things. Which, Everything's galvanized before. It's every, right. Wait, I think, how long did patents last real quick? Um, From filing, it's 20 years. 20 years. From filing date, but right. it takes around three to get an examiner. Right, so it's about 17 it. years. So it's normal. patent pending usually for three right. years. The examiner finally responds. Yeah, so you know what that means. What's Montage is about to be. It probably already patent. is. It already is. But. If you see protecting your radius Taj uh, iron fence next week, I don't know anything about. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, but, um, but yeah. So like, no, this is patent pending. Right. It'll probably take three years to get a response from the examiner. Right. And uh, they'll say, "We'll give you this, 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 and this as claims. You got to prove me something on this last claim if you want that." And right. usually, we have to go back and forth one or two times. Then they give you the patent, and then. By then, it's been four years, and you have about sixteen. How, how long that. did it take on fence track? Because you have three or four years. Yeah, yeah we thought. filed that in two thousand twelve. Twelve. Yeah. Then we did some new stuff right. around two thousand fourteen, and uh, yeah. So yeah. and you have a utility patent on fence utility, track. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. The one you want. You yeah. don't want a design patent. You yeah. want the utility patent. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it, it gives you more protection. Right. Right. Design is is more of like has to look just concept, like this right, and, yeah. and, and, and the utility copy. is is the concept it's the concept right, right. right. Yeah. so that way a little change doesn't really yeah you know get around it so, do you want to leave anybody with or everybody anybody <laughs> <laughs> with anything else is there anything else you want to man i think uh i think if you guys are out there selling just uh don't be afraid to uh pitch some of these newer products i mean yeah. um and not even just fence track. I mean, anything that gives the customer value. Yeah. I mean, even the the post protecting thing. Just yeah, any, the I fence think armor. I, the fence armor. Yep. Yep. That adds value. So if you are going to do wood, I think that's something that the salesman needs to bring up and say, look, you know, here's your average lifespan. But if you put this on here, this is what you're going to get. Just like we talked about, there's sprinkler systems hitting it. And so great product. If they want something that's modern with all steel, you got the high planes, and yeah. even vinyl, PVC products, they're a lot less maintenance than, you know, it's really, it's really just uh, watching everything evolve and products are just getting better and better and better yeah. and longer lasting and they're adding value. And so just don't be afraid to get out of the norm and pitch some new products. Because it's coming, the change is coming. I said this last time. It's coming whether you like it or not. Yep. Might as well start learning it and giving your customer more value. And a lot of these products, you can make more money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, so if you're if you're selling commodity products and you got to compete, you know, it, it's harder to get another so much a linear foot or per section, however you want to bid it. Yep. Um, but if you're selling something that's unique, you know, it's going to be a while for this is going to be a commodity. Right. You know, you, you, got, you got your 10, 15 years before everyone's trying to cut each other's yeah. throat on it. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. So, so pitch these products now while the margins are better. So good. You know, so Absolutely. that's what I got. 
No, that's great. You know, I often think about when one thing to close out uh, my thoughts as I wrap, put a bow on this thing and wrap it up is, you know, Brett, uh, there's options out there for composite fencing, for steel fencing, aluminum fencing, all these different things. But what I don't want anyone to do is see these products and get green with envy because you wanted fence track. You should have got fence track. And knowing that you guys are the leader of all of this, yeah, you know, and, and there wasn't a space for this before in the United States until you came up with the concept and really started pushing it. There was people that were doing similar things, but you know, you're really at the, at the forefront of this whole thing. So, man, I just appreciated you as always for continuing to innovate, you know, continuing to have that desire because you're you're you stand just like an Eddie Gibbs in a unique position in the market because of your background. I, I guess I could say the same thing about me. Like, look how I got into manufacturing and then came out into contracting. Yeah. You went from contracting and went into the manufacturing the other way. But but, but like, I think where you're getting at is quality is still important too, you know. Yes. Right. Because there's make sure that the product you're buying, even if it's high end, matches the quality matches the price. Yes. A hundred percent. hundred percent. And like I said, don't get caught. If you want a composite fence, don't be green with envy. Call fence track, buy a fence track fence. I promise you won't. That won't be a mistake you've made uh, this year for sure. So um, that's all we got. Brett, again, thanks for coming out, buddy. Thanks for hanging out, showing us all your fun products. Find us. Uh, we'll continue showing off all the fence track products and everything that we're doing out there on all of our social media, radius underscore podcast. And we will see you guys on the next episode. Peace. You've been listening to the Protecting Your Radius podcast from the LuxCore Studios in Bixby, Oklahoma. Thanks for sticking around and connect with us and all of our partners at www.protectingyourradius.com. We want to thank our premier partners. LuxCore, the newest line of premium quality composite infill to slide into your fence track fence system. Frame your style today. Also, Stain Track, the world's first patented standalone stain machine. Utilizing flood coat technology, Stain Track covers boards, pickets, posts, and any type of dimensional wood you can think of. And what better way to use your Stain Track machine than to use the easy application Wood Defender family of stains? Wood Defender goes on easy and covers in one coat with no back brushing. And of course, the true power of our show is you, the listener. Please rate and review our show on whatever platform you consume this content. Your five-star likes and reviews help other contractors get the message that we all want to be better and do better. And in the construction world, we can never forget that before you can be great, you've got to be good. Before you can be good, you've got to be bad. But before you can even be bad, you've got to try. <laughs>